Welcome back to Manufacture, and the factory must grow. So today we're going to be dealing with, well, one green science, which I said last episode, we're going to be doing today. Also, these. These are shipping containers. It's a little bit dark. I need to put some powered lanterns. But basically, they let you store uh, many, many, you can see, 65,000 items, uh, you know, just fine. So we're going to be using those instead of these bins up here. And because uh, these are terrible, they're, very, they're good early game, but really once you start getting two or four furnaces going or blast furnaces that have got four now down there i'll show you in a second when it comes light um they start to quickly fill up and uh we we need that to to well stop uh, first of all i'm just going to take some iron out because i want to do something with it i want to turn it all into steel because these shipping containers are made with steel so you can see i've got four of our things out here uh one a couple of quick improvements i don't need inserters for these to remove stuff out of them so just straight belt will do and i've put this floor level so one it's not spawnable it's half a block above the, the normal block level and also that is a full block above that one so these i don't rip the stuff off the belts anymore when they're being processed so this is the new floor level and that's sort of like a subfloor that we're going to have or need down there perhaps sometimes. Anyway, um, oh yeah, I just want to just dump in some iron into here. And uh, I don't have any slag output for this yet, but we'll come on to that in a second. I do, however, need to give it some coal. Uh, let's just borrow some of you and uh, just dump that in there for now. Okay, it's going to produce some steel. It's on the same belt as everything else. It's going to bring it back to the main little area we spawn in. Now, you're probably going to want at this point to either keep on breaking grass, which is one route, until you get poppies, basically, or you're going to make sure to basically make some beetroot. And uh, I think you can get the seeds for that, uh, f well, from legendary loot bags, but I think they also come from uh, just breaking grass occasionally as well. Uh, I deleted most of mine, thinking I wouldn't ever need them. Ha! <laughs> I need them. Uh, regardless, uh, you're going to want to either get one of those two things and convert them into rose red. So that is fine. And dump it in here. Combine that with some steel plates and you get corrugate iron machine blocks. A lot of them. You're going to need something like 57 or so or 58 ish. And you're going to need a shipping container blueprint, which is just a piece of paper and a chest. And both of those together will let you build a new shipping container. So out here, I'm going to build a second one for iron. And then I don't need one for steel just yet, but uh, I do probably need one for slag. So we need at least um, another set of these. Uh, do I have enough in there? Um, I don't think that's enough. Well, I still have something out of because I don't have enough steel plate. Uh, I need another two. I think you need about two stacks of steel plate to actually make one shipping container. So let's put this down. Uh, hopefully, it is a little bit dark. Hopefully, you can see. Um, are we just going to put down a shipping container? Let's just say we want it spaced out a little bit. So we don't want it there, not there. Not, uh, there should do. Okay, so you can see it's got a multi block form, and everything else in that multi block is basically three by seven by three. Of these corrugate iron machine box apart from the fact that the center all the way through is hollow so uh don't put any blocks in the center otherwise build it up like normal and then i'm just gonna need to go and uh, put some blocks on top to stop spawning uh one good advantage of it is that you can quickly get um there we go Got some blocks you can quickly get stuff inserted just by running conveyors on top of it and putting dropping conveyors on top so it will just drop down into the container uh, you can show that over here i've just got this new set of stairs instead of going up there and ripping stuff out of the belts i've just got a basically a dropping conveyor there so i'll wait till it's daytime i'll bring you back in the meantime i'll just construct the uh well most of the container and then you'll see what i mean here we are, it's daytime. I've got most of this actually set up. I'm just going to dump some more ores into uh, some of these furnaces just so that I've got uh, basically something that I can deal with. Uh, keep that going. And the same thing over here. We want to keep some coal. Yep, it's going to process. I don't have the output for the slag just yet, but uh, I just want to make sure all of these are kept fed. Okay, uh, as I was saying, oh, you occasionally do still get with the sulfur annoyingly uh, i do have the chimneys by the way going straight into the same um the same chunk okay so it is in the same chunk as these so the greenhouses can still absorb the stuff up there and it is going up there as normal so nothing yeah, too sensitive in there and i'm just going to make sure that i put all the i put most of the uh, the ironing gets down that's fine so shipping container center is hollow 
Uh, you can see right there, it doesn't ask you to put any blocks in there. However, this front one does need a block. So uh, I had a full stack and uh, I've got seven remaining. So it is 57 blocks you're going to need for each one. And then uh, we can just basically just right click it, I think. Yeah, there we go. There's our shipping container. And you can see I've already got a conveyor on top, which will just insert stuff. But if I put stuff in here anyway, remember, it'll only take one item, just like the advanced bins. But you're going to want to reserve what item it actually puts in. So iron, copper, and we can put labels, uh, basically signs on them uh, from there. So that's all good. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed you the... I think I showed you last episode. I just replaced all that horrible circuitry up here with a uh, single timer from Project Red. Uh, works perfectly fine and is set to 30 seconds. Uh, so that is working for those. I'll extend those to, to basically work for the rest of the greenhouse fairly soon, but we're going to get to forestry farms soon. So I'm sort of like, uh, do I really want to make that many pistons? Uh, I don't really want to do it, but, um, you know, if I have problems running through here occasionally, you can see there's still pollution to be absorbed. I need to run through occasionally. Fine. With that done, um, then uh, there we go. More rose red. Uh, that's going to be the limitation, by the way, I think, uh, largely early on, because you're going to get plenty of iron to deal with. And you can see I've got a, a few greenhouse glasses up there, but there's, there's a about an array of about 30 or 40 of greenhouse glass in that. So I may as well just get rid of this, to be honest. Uh, it's been doing well so far, and there's another Naga coming in, uh, which my miniguns hopefully will take care of if it gets any closer. Uh, the Lapis is just really used for the greenhouse glass, nothing else uh, in there. So we'll just dump all of that. Uh, I've got some copper ore. Let's just get rid of that for now. So more Corrigan iron machine blocks I'm going to need. And I've almost got enough for another set. So that's good. We just have to wait for that to come in. And then we're going to have a third container. Now, I think I want slag output. Where do I want the actual that slag output? Remember, we don't need to put chests here. The, uh, the conveyor belts will be able to take the outputs. So just as we got this subfloor here taking stuff out... Uh, helps if I can get somewhere where I can show you. There we go. Uh, that subfloor taking stuff out. We can do exactly the same at the same level as here. If you don't want to use this subfloor idea or this this idea, you can use the uh, covered conveyors, but they cost a lot of steel. Uh, covers conveyors belts uh, need steel scaffolding, which is made six for six uh, steel ingots. So it's basically one steel ingot per covered conveyor. You do if you want, it's just cheaper to just put another floor level in for me. And you can do the same thing along the back instead of having this chest here. I've, see, I've got some spare ores. Um, then you can just have another conveyor running out. What I may well do is reverse the direction of output coming going that way, and then bring it around and then over the top of these uh, shipping containers. Then I'll have one for iron, one for copper, and probably one to, for slag to start off with. As I'm extending things out, I did move the the mine over here, and we do need to convert that to electric. Um, and also get some more, uh, get some more coal. And the coal, uh, the coal chunk has run out completely. I restarted it, and then nothing was happening, so I had to go look. And yep, it's running out entirely of coal. well, there is no coal over there. So I need to find a new coal chunk. And uh, also, one commenter, thank you very, very, very much. That I didn't even need the the ability to convert from uh, my plants. Uh, because the uh, rather handily, this fluid pump will just draw from the environment. So input, output into the boiler block. And over here, you can see I've got a thousand coal being fed into the back of the boiler controller, which is outputting steam, which is outputting uh, basically electricity. So we can use that, which means I can probably hook up these two uh, to basically the electric versions. But let's get on with green science and automating that. Okay, this is going to take a bit of a larger chain of stuff to do. So here we have the, the basically the assembly that's going to make our green signs. It takes inserters and it takes conveyors. Backwards from that, we're going to worry. Don't worry about the inserters for now. Let's just think about the conveyor, the conveyors. So this one is going to have to make conveyors for us. Our conveyors uh, should be okay in this. Let's just see whether that can be made. Hopefully, conveyors just the regular kind. Can you be made in a basic assembly? You can. You either need uh, iron plate and iron gear, one of each, and you'll make two conveyor belts, or you need two iron ingots and then one iron gear, etc. Okay, and of course we can go back to iron gears and look that we can make them from two iron plates in a metal press. So, <clears throat> uh, three iron plates total to make two conveyor belts, or we can do things and spend a little bit more and make the, the line simpler by just spending two iron ingots instead of one through the iron plate 
that we can make through this. Uh, the, the reason to actually do that is just to make things simpler. Um, yeah, so we have a splitting conveyor belt here. So we can split our iron supply two ways, send half of them one way, half of them the other, or we will have to do a rebalancer if we want the most efficient route. So if you want the easy route, basically you want an iron supply coming in. It's going to go turn into plates, which is going to turn into gears. The gears are going to be fed in here. And then the other half of the splitter is just going to go straight into, let's say, this here. Okay, and that will be the gears, and it'll be the iron or the plates, depending on how you actually want to construct this. And you end up with uh, what you want. Now, I'm just going to quickly check my splitters to see which one I personally want to do. You will have a choice yourself. The inserters are a bit more complicated, so we'll get the, the conveyors first. And of course, we can always do semi-automated just by crafting inserters ourselves. But regardless, uh, let me set up the rest. Okay, so two by one splitter then. If I have uh, input coming here into the splitting conveyor belt, half's gonna go that way, half's gonna go this way. So the half's gonna go that way, it's gonna get turned into, this is gonna be our gear press, and that's gonna go straight through and get put into that with the, an extracting hopper or something along those kind of lines, or just a regular hopper will do the job. And then this half, we're gonna have to deal with to split it again. So if I then put a, a splitting conveyor belt uh, this way, okay, so uh, this is going to be plates coming in, by the way. So if I put, because uh, if we have a look at that uh, conveyor again, it is just one iron gear and one iron plate, but the iron gear is two iron plates. Yeah, okay. So uh, we want two going that way and one going this way. So now I have, so two quarters going that way. One quarter will go that way and one quarter will go back on itself over here. All right. So then I probably want to just feed that back on itself, I think. Uh, I'm sure someone will probably come back saying that's not mathematically perfect or something. Uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> In operation, I've tried something like this and it comes out roughly even. Not exact, but again, you can never be quite perfect with that huge setup sometimes. But regardless, so now quarter is going to be fed back on itself, which is going back into the input. So the input is going to go that way. So our iron plates need to come in here. Half is going to go that way. Half is going to go this way, another quarter, or well, half of that, a quarter, is going to get fed back, which will then be split by these two again. The other is just going to be plates, and they need to be fed basically straight in to the machine. So just like before, we'll just remove those two, and then I want to just feed this way, I think. Uh, is it the wrong way? It is the wrong way. I always forget you need to build backwards with these things. And let's just feed that way. And then backwards. Okay, I need to remove that one. So we need to go down one. Uh, I've got two hoppers here, so that will probably do. At least for the moment. Ugh, don't like the fact that they are uncovered like that. Um, we could just feed into a chest like before, I suppose. Uh, but we can't put two chests next to each other. They need to be crates or something. Uh, well, I guess we could put... Uh, can we put um, vertical conveyors down there at some point? I suppose we could. We could use vertical conveyors. Do I have them on me? I do. Uh, why don't I just put one that way? Let's see if this actually works. I don't know if it does or not, but uh, it's worthwhile trying. We can have a cool input. Okay, and how about a vertical conveyor coming down? Down, that's, that's up. <laughs> to go the other way. How do I specify the other way? That's that's going up. Um, I guess. Nope, that's going up that side. Hmm. Fine. Uh, do we have a wrench or tool? Because the engineers, this is immersive engineering, so the engineers hammer. Will you reverse? Will you reverse? No, nope, you're rotating. Thank you, but I would rather you. Nope. Hmm. Right. Okay, I assume there is no downward facing one, so we'll just go for the regular kind of dropping off the edge kind of approach that we've done before, which works perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, I kind of like something a bit nicer than that, but uh, I can cope. Okay, and that's that pretty much done. Okay, so both of those are now coming in. So half's going to go that way, half's going to go this way, split back on itself, and then this way is going to go straight into that. So now we should end up with gears and plates in uh, sort of the right ratio when they come out. It should be one-to-one-ish at this point. They'll go in, they'll get turned into inserters, which will need to then be fed 
Uh, I'm not sure if we need an extracting. I think we do need an extracting uh, conveyor extracting for this, and it's just some more iron and a conveyor belt. Let's get a couple of those going. Uh, likely going to need them, and we'll then use those to feed into the green science. Okay, inserters are going to be somewhat similar. Now, you could try and reuse that same splitter approach to make more gears and plates. That is what's going to be needed for inserters too. However, um, as it happens, they also need iron ingots. So, to make things less complicated, but more sort of uh, taking up more space, we can set up another sort of, basically another copy of this. But at this end of it, before we get any further, we need to actually split uh, iron. So we're going to need to do a couple of things. So have a look here, we've got inserters. We've got iron gears, which we know how to make already. Uh, but if we have a look at the uh, standard assembler approach of this, we need less materials. Uh, we just need one of the basic control circuits. We need one iron gear and one iron plate. Recognize this? These two are exactly the same as this thing over here on the left hand side. However, this on the right hand side, the basic control circuit needs redstone, it needs copper, and it needs iron, and it needs three iron, which is exactly the same amount that goes into these. So if we split the iron, whatever is coming in, two ways, and then have one way feeding into a metal press just like this, so we, for example, we could have a splitter right here. Uh, well, we probably want to actually separate that a little bit more, but technically you could have a splitter right here, uh, you know, as far as that's concerned. And then half the iron could go into the, the parallel sort of construction which is going to be then the control circuit. So from that, you're going to need to go back one into copper wire. And again, this can be made from a metal press from a copper plate if you wanted to uh, using that. Or you could just go with uh, an assembler, basic assembler. Yeah, just one one iron uh, is actually worthwhile even going with a... Let's just take a look. Metal press, copper plate. No, it is definitely not worthwhile. Um because it's going to be one-to-one -one on the regular kind of assembler. So we're just feeding copper like that, and it comes out as copper wire uh, versus the uh, sort of uh, metal press approach, which, oh yeah, two copper wire, but it is two going in, so it's identical. There's, there's no gain by going by a metal press. So basically, this assembler will do the job just fine. So we need three copper going in, and we need one redstone going in, and uh, the rest is just iron. Uh, now, of course, you can't really automate all of that, uh, or at least not very easily with what's coming out here. You wouldn't want to trigger this, uh, you know, at your convenience. Oh, we've got one plate stuck there. Is that because other things are stuck? Yeah, looks like we've got a stack of conveyor belts there. It's built up. We've got 22 and none. But it's definitely not quite perfect here. I do need to figure out where, where it's going a little bit wrong. But uh, you can see here we've got conveyors to pick up and uh, I can get the extra ones there. We've got a full stack, we can process them later. I'll figure that out. That does look right, but maybe it's not, you know, perfect. If you can think of a way it's going wrong here. Uh, so two quarters, um, one quarter, so that's three of the four quarters. That's fine. And then the rest is being returned and should be re-split again. Eh, I don't know. Uh, again, these things don't deal with stacks at all well, so yeah, I, uh, I will leave that alone for now. If there's any better way of doing it, please feel free to put in the comments for everyone else who's watching. I, of course, can correct things between the episodes, but uh, that'll be cool. Anyway, uh, so I need a new setup that's just like this. I'm going to need to probably extend the, this flooring a little bit, just so that I've got some more room, and we'll come out here a little bit and uh, build that up. Now, for the other side, building backwards, we're going to quickly get rid of this. I've just used that to just prove the concept. It does make green science just fine. It's a little bit unbalanced. 1300 or 20, 1258 versus 32. Yeah, so we need quite a bit few few more pieces yet. So, first of all, we just want to put down the uh, output. And I'm going to put that right about here, I think. Maybe one further, maybe two further out. Yeah, so I'll have a... Uh, a nice sort of uh, way I can get the power in without uh, too much conflicting blocks. That's the main thing. Uh, so standard assembly is a three by three, but it's, some of it's empty. So just take a look at that. So you've got three, uh, four item input, sorry, a small energy input, hatch, a gearbox and circuitry. So uh, that's fine. Um, gearbox can go in the middle. Yeah. OK. And then we can get all four of our inputs. So one, two, three and four. And then we got the circuitry. 
Do I have circuitry? Yes. And a small energy input hatch, not a tiny. Do bear that in mind. And then a couple of steel sheet metals over here. Uh, we're going to need three inserters. I've only got two, so I need to go and make another one. Uh, so for that, and then the machine controller. Uh, do I need a, uh, do I need a uh, casing as well? I'm going to need casing. So machine controller, that's fine. And I do want to put down some blocks just there and there. They won't be filled. Is there any of those that won't be filled? Middle won't be. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I just need one for here. And then we should be good to go. So let's just go and grab that quickly. I think I've got a uh, sort of crafting grid over here for inserters, or roughly. Not you, but I do need a casing, so I'll take one of those. Uh, inserters? Do I have anything that's roughly like an inserter? Yeah, this is, looks... Yeah, there we go. So do I have gears? I've got some spare gears in here. Yep. Uh, an extra inserter. That's fine, so I think that's everything. Run over here. And uh, we can obviously move those around, but for the moment... I don't tend to use them in operation. I tend to use the uh, the others. There we go. And then we just went up the block on the top there. Cool. So this... Oh, and one on top of that, of course. Okay. So this should now be operational. Yeah, there we go. Not enough energy. That's fine. We're just going to need to connect it up to there. To, you know, a block that comes over the top. And I don't think that's quite aligned with this. But it's close enough that we can just run an extra... Uh, can we just run from... Oh, I've got it on stair mode. Very handy for stairs as well as uh, anything else. Build to me. And then we can just put a relay in. And then hook this thing up. Okay, now the thing is... I'm going to need another inserter, aren't I? Um, you need to configure a standard... In, uh, thanks very much for commenting to, to tell me this, by the way. The extra thing you see in recipes for, let's say, an inserter recipe in the standard assembler. It says you also need an inserter to make an inserter. That one isn't used, it's just there to tell this whole thing uh, what to actually build, because there are different recipes for that. So yeah, thank you very much for a commenter who said exactly that, so thank you very much. Because uh, I was talking about green science. Why didn't green need green science for green science if it was going to make one in the standard assembler? That's why. We don't need a sample assembler for the, for the green science anyway, we just use a basic one. And uh, yeah, so now we just need the same setup as before for iron and gear plates but with a splitter for this beforehand. And we do need to make these uh, wires, as I mentioned before, so I am going to need another basic assembler to get that going. Okay, I think we can be sneakier even still with this last sort of setup for green science. You see I've got some assemblers set up here. I'll explain this now. Previously, we'd fed the, uh, the fourth quarter back on itself to be fed back into the machine again. Now that's going out and sideways because there is a very nice shortcut for this whole thing. Uh, inserters obviously need the basic control circuit. We've dealt with that, but uh, here's the recipe. So those two were dealt with on this side here. The other side, however, only needs, if you go to the uh, standard assembler, only needs one iron plate. So because we want the these output one to one, I think, uh, inserters, are they output one to one? Yeah, the, yes, they are output one to one. Uh, that also means we only need one plate here. So that means we need those four quarters and that means we've got exactly what we need. So the fourth quarter is heading out sideways across over here, and it's going to be fed into one of the inputs to another standard inserter. The other input we'll come into in a second, uh, and it's going to be coming out of here. And then uh, we don't need the third input, I don't think. Uh, let's have a look. Um, it's not inserters, it's this. What do you need uh, for this? So a uh, couple wire, that's what's going to be coming over here. Yeah, redstone is going to be coming from the front. So um, I think we just need... Well, wait a second. Am I going wrong there? So another simple, uh, we need four inputs. Nope, this, this. Uh, we need... How many inputs do we need? Four. So iron plate, copper wire, redstone, and basic control circuit. Okay, so iron plate, copper wire, redstone. Yeah, there we go. So that's going to be redstone going from the front. We'll just put a box down or something with an extracting hopper or something along those kind of lines. In fact, can I even put it here? Uh, I can, I think, because that's not going to be what we think it is. That's not going to be an output that way. It's going to be an output this way. So we can just put like an extracting uh, thing. 
And that doesn't rotate. Slightly annoying when that happens. There we go. Extracting. Going this way. Where's my regular conveyor? Uh, just flip that around. There we go. So it's going to extract out of here, which is going to produce the copper wire. To produce the copper wire, we need a mold, which we're just going to put in the back there like that. And then the front is just going to take copper. So if we do that, that should have started, I imagine. Not enough energy. Okay. Are we not connected between those two? We are not. So I just need to connect up to that. It's going dark already. It seems like the days are just shorter than everything else. Uh, did that not link? That's actually wired to the same point. Okay, I'm linking. Connect to you. There we go. Okay, so you should now... Well, it's going dark. Um, should now be processing. You are. And a couple wires going out and into the input at the back there. Redstone can go in here. This front one I'm going to use for the recipe. It never gets used up apparently. So we've got the control circuits, then the inserters, and I need to go and put some lights out here. So let me go and craft some more lights so you can see. And everything's now hooked up. Only downside is I see this just hanging out on the belt. I don't know if this despawns if it's on the belt or not. If it does, that's bad. We would need to put them into buffer boxes, and we, that's easy enough to do. Put a chest here, put a hopper here, and feed it into the chest instead. Perfectly fine. It's just that uh, if that would work without it, so much the easier. Uh, again, we could just use covered ones if you really wanted to stop me from accidentally picking stuff up. But you see over here, we've got uh, lots of iron. The iron's going through. It's being processed uh, four, uh, three ways, sorry. Two of the ways, obviously, is going uh, into one machine. So uh, right now here, what well, we've got in input item, uh, we've processed all the copper into copper wire. We've got redstone here. That did just process something. You see there, it's got some inputs over here. And insert a missing input item. What are you missing? Probably just some iron, I imagine. But there's one, two. Okay. And the third one. Oh, <laughs> I've got a wire relay in there for some reason. That should now be processing. Yep. Okay. And now we just need to feed that output to this input. And thankfully, I do have most of the stuff I need apart from... Oh, no, I do have all the stuff I need. Good. So, yeah, there we go. We're going to get our inserters, whether we want them or not. And let's just put them that way. And I'll pick up the rest and just feed them back in. I don't need the inserters otherwise. So let's just put them in there. And that then should then be making, hopefully... Oh, hang on. Am I went to the wrong place? That is entirely possible to put the wrong place. No, it's in the right place. Yep, that's fine. It's just that the other side doesn't have any uh, any conveyors. So uh, this side is entirely independent, remember? So we do need to put maybe some... Uh, let's just take a couple of iron out of there. And put a couple of iron in here. And again, you can put some kind of splitter together to decide what ratio you want. It's four iron on that side, and it's going to be three iron on this side. So yeah, you can get around just splitting half and half, I suppose, uh, if you want to do that kind of thing. So we've got uh, just copper input into that box, redstone into that box, and then two iron boxes at the back. And then everything should start processing. Uh, hopefully, once it gets through, this should start processing. Yep, it is. And then it should feed green science, which it just did, into here, which is going to start processing and producing green science. That is fully automated green science, apart from, obviously, the inputs. And the inputs can be automated if you want. I mean, if you're going to feed straight from your furnaces, you can create some kind of sorters later and just basically dump them straight in to get just science. I probably want more stuff than that, so uh, I may want to think about maybe splitting and sending some to science. What do you guys think? You can put it down in the comments below. Uh, here we've got uh, 4,000 iron. We've got only 600, uh, sorry, 4,000 copper, 600 iron, and yes, 10,000 mini slag. We can process that into the full size slag, and that'll save on uh, on you know um, item. Uh, use as far as the shipping container is concerned, but I think we're pretty much done there. Uh, we've got some other bits and pieces to go. Obviously, now I don't have a lot coming into my base, but uh, again, we can just use splitters for that if we want some, you know, sort of small, healthy component coming into our bases for uh, manual crafting. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. All the slag outputs uh, from this are now on the same belt. They're going out that way. They're coming out just the back. And they're forming the same going to the same actual processing belt uh, for now 
I haven't put preheaters in. We could do that to speed things up. Uh, but uh, I think next up is going to be to fully automate that greenhouse somehow. Uh, and of course, for that, we've got some options coming up. One of the options is the forestry farms, which is in here somewhere. Automation, there it is. Uh, it looks like forestry farms anyway. Farm structure and thermionic fabricator needs blue research, unfortunately, which needs blue science, which needs oil processing. So oil processing is the next one in and that needs red and green. And there's lots of stuff that needs red and green. So between the episodes, I'm probably just going to wait for that to build up. Keep on adding more stuff to the front end of it. And then from the back end, we can just pick up our research and trading lots and lots of quests. So hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. Lots of stuff to be done this episode. Lots of um, mechanical stuff. Hopefully it didn't blow your mind too much, especially with all the different assemblers. And if that isn't enough power, then we can obviously build a second boiler and second scene generator. Uh, how are we doing for coal? Yeah, still 300. I had a thousand at the start of the episode and it's been about an hour or two while off camera. So yeah, pretty happy so far. I actually need to find another coal chunk and then we need to deal with pollution somehow. It has rained a couple of times. That rain has brought down presumably some of the sulfur that can cause acid rain and uh, well, deal with problems for your oak leaves and other things, other plants. But for the moment, we should be okay. As always, guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, you're more than welcome to. And click on the bell if you want to get notifications. If you've liked the episode, click on the like button. But more importantly than all of those, please leave comments down below on how you can help your fellow players play through this pack, which is pretty amazing so far. Quite liking it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. 